thank the Assistant Minister. The question is that this bill now be now read a second time. The member for Chifley. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. If the um, hardest thing in the day um, is to uh, support this bill, then um, it's not a problem whatsoever. Um, you've got no problems whatsoever. There is no reason you wouldn't support this bill. It is a great bill. In fact, um, there are two re good reasons to support this bill. One, um, my friend and colleague, the Shadow Attorney-General, has put his heart and soul into uh, breathing life into Marrakesh in the Australian context. And he deserves um, uh, more, more than ample praise for the work he's done in advocating for this. The Coalition um, have done a great job in terms of uh, this bill uh, and um, what it will do. Um, they've probably, I dare say, gone a little bit further, um, but they have done a great thing for Australians who want to be able to access content, um, who are visually uh, impaired or others that uh, have got hurdles in their way in terms of accessing content. Um, but that's it. That's the limit of my compliments for this bill. Because it's not what's in this bill that you should be focused on when you're looking at this debate. What you should be focused on is what's not in this bill. And what's not in this bill, or what is represented by the absence of key parts of this bill, what is represented by that absence is policy cowardice. Policy cowardice by the Turnbull government, who a few years ago, when they put the exposure draft of this bill, said that they would include provisions for safe harbours in copyright. This is not some academic concept. This is not something that you know, is, is too difficult, too arcane, um, too much in the, the sort of policy long weeds to ignore. Because an inability to have an effective safe, safe harbour regime in, in this country that was supposed to be in this bill means that jobs are on the line, businesses are on the line. Um, we look potentially at a government that championed itself as being the innovation government, the one that would see all these new firms sprout up, particularly in the tech space. These firms now are actively looking to go overseas because this bill, the policy cowardice that is wrapped up in this bill, was unable to work out a way to allow those firms to continue in this country. That's what's the problem with this bill. And I'll give you a classic example. There is a firm in Melbourne that started small, has grown big, has provided, in just in Melbourne, over 100 jobs. Over 100 jobs. It has provided artists with income. It's provided manufacturers with income. For the artists, they'll do better than just relying on Australia Council grants. They'll actually make a quid and do very well out of it. The firm is called Redbubble. And right now, they, their, their commercial prospects have been put under pressure because of the policy cowardice of this government. Now, this is what Redbubble are. Just to let you know what we're turning our back on, Redbubble um, uh, by, all, by many accounts, it's probably one of the largest global internet companies to come out of this country. They have some 15 million visitors per month. They have over 450,000 artists uploaded work. So over 450,000 artists have uploaded work with over 11 million images available. 63,000 of these artists are from this country. 63,000. 93 per cent of their sales are offshore from Australia. Artists have earned some 72 million from the Redbubble site, with over 10 per cent of this going to Australian artists. This is nothing to sneeze at. This is good money earned by great Australian artists, by a company that was emerged out of Australia from Australian smarts right here. We don't celebrate these companies enough. This is a great, great company. We don't celebrate them enough. We should be supporting them. We should have legislation in this parliament that says, you know what, we want to make sure you survive. But because of the cowardice <coughs> on that side, because of the cowardice on that side, well, I tell you what, uh, Minister, if the shoe fits, you should wear it. Because 
The Liberal government that's supposed to support entrepreneurism is doing everything it can to not actually support entrepreneurism in this country through the failures of this bill. And the, the, in terms of the, um, uh, the earnings of these artists, this year all artists on the Redbubble platform will earn $30 million, growing at roughly 50 per cent a year. And the contribution that they're making to both global and Australian artists is greater than any single Australian organisation, including the Australia Council. Including the Australia Council. They directly employ 200 people in high-paying tech jobs of the future, and about 100 of them are in Australia, as I said earlier, and about 600 employed indirectly via the fulfillers of advanced manufacturing, and some 60 of these firms right here in, in this country, in Australia, in Horsham and Brisbane. And what happened? Redbubble had an artist that, that developed an image that incorporated an image, a logo of another organisation, Hell's Angels. And the Hell's Angels, the Hell's Angels, well, apparently they're your friends too, Minister, because you're, you're helping aiding and abetting the Hell's Angels in squeezing out an Australian firm from our local, from our local environment because you didn't provide safe harbour reform. So the Hell's Angels, the Hell's Angels complained to Redbubble about an image used on their site. Redbubble took it down. Now that normally would be the end of the story. In the US context, the Hell's Angels wouldn't have a leg to stand on, but they shopped around and realised, with some of the toughest copyright laws in the country right here, with some of the toughest co copyright laws, they could sue Redbubble, even though Redbubble, as a platform, as a marketplace, took the action. They have about 10 people that scour that website to make sure the copyright breaches are dealt with and dealt with quickly. They took it down and they couldn't. They were banking, Redbubble were banking that this bill that's being debated now, where the exposure draft said that this government would deal with safe harbour reform, they were banking on this being fixed. It hasn't. And now they're being sued. So firms like Redbubble, like Envato, like 99designs, they are all under legal pressure because this bill and the cowards opposite were unable to find a way to ensure this survives. And this is what the chief executive, he was in the papers today, in the Australian, in the Australian business section. The CEO, Martin Hosking, this is a guy who should be championed by those opposite. He is contributing massively in terms of the income of this country, jobs, providing jobs of the future, helping in terms of manufacturing. He should be championed. This guy is a legend. But his business is being squeezed <coughs> offshore because these guys can't work out those opposite how to actually facilitate safe harbour reform in this country within the copyright context. So Martin Hosking has threatened to pull his ASX listed company out of Australia. This is insane because the country's copyright laws aren't reformed. So he says, without safe harbour protections, they'll have to leave. He says, I want to, this is him, Martin Hosking, I want to be here and I want a modern, innovative Australia. The government's asking for innovation from corporations, but the government has to show the same level of innovation. That's what he said. Why, why should a firm like this be squeezed out of the country? Because those opposite can't find a way to actually provide for safe harbour reform. Startup Oz, that represents companies like this, has said, we risk, this is Startup Oz, we risk losing great businesses like these, Redbubble, and stifling the growth of others if we don't develop a strong safe harbour framework such as they have in the US, <coughs> Singapore, the UK and other EU countries. If Australia wants to transition to become a digital economy, we must catch up with the rest of the world on how we treat online copyright content. These firms want to protect copyright. Martin Hosking in Redbubble, 99designs, Envato, these firms believe in copyright. They want to protect it. They want to protect artists' incomes. They are doing better for artists' incomes than anyone else in this country in terms of providing them with the ability to get ahead. They should not be squeezed out because of cowardice on the other side, but they are. What we want to see is the protection of copyright and the protection of artists' incomes and the protection of companies like Redbubble. Now, because those opposite didn't have the guts to tackle this, 
We've apparently been told we're going for another review. So I want to read in hands out how many reviews there have been into this issue over the years. In February, we had the government consultation on the Productivity Commission inquiry into intellectual property arrangements. There was a discussion about safe harbours there. November last year, Joint Standing Committee on Treaties inquiry into Trans-Pacific Partnership. That also dealt with safe harbour obligations. In December of last year, we also had another roundtable by the Productivity Commission into IP arrangements. December 2015, exposure draft into this bill that talked about safe harbours, consultation about that then. In September 2014, Attorney General's Department discussion paper, online copyright infringement, safe harbours talked about there. November 2011, Attorney General's Department consultation paper, revising the scope of the copyright safe harbour scheme. 2009, another review. Commonwealth Government, Digital Economy, Future Directions, Consultation Paper, question posed, should the existing copyright safe harbour scheme for carriage service providers be broadened? 2009. Who, who was in government then? We were. Of course. Did you know? right, we were. I the members to keep their remarks I'm saying the chair. this has been reviewed. 2005. We review, I mean, we've gone through this. July 2005, when you guys were in office, review of the scope of Part 5, Division 2AA of the Copyright Act. December 2004, another review by the Coalition. Why didn't you sort it out? You had, you've had over a decade, Minister. You've had the, over a decade. The member for Chifley will resume his seat for a moment. There's too many remarks being directed at one another. All remarks are through the chair, and I've, uh, this is the second time I've asked for that to happen. Member for Chifley. Apologies, Deputy Speaker. <coughs> December 2004, inquiry into copyright legislation. And so, what's the answer now? We're going to another inquiry, <coughs> another inquiry by the so-called champions of entrepreneurism, who want to be able to basically have all these reviews while Australian companies and Australian firms are completely squeezed out. Now, the opponents of this, in terms of safe harbours, they all point out, "Oh, this is all for Google." That's what they say. They go, oh, this is all for Google. This is for some other big multinational corporation. It's not about local artists. Well, there are other big corporations like News Corp that are also supporting um, no move on safe harbours. They're opposed to safe harbours. I've seen News Corp rail about Google. Here's my challenge to News Corp, because I've seen them. They've written all these papers, all these um, columns in their newspapers. I saw one in The Australian the other week saying how bad Google is. Well, if they don't like Google, get your systems administrators within News Corporation to ban access to Google. Stop every one of your journalists, News Corp, from using Google. Stop them right now. If you believe that what Google's doing is wrong, stop them right now. And in fact, Google would not emerge in the Australian context. Why? Because our copyright laws wouldn't allow them to. The only reason we <coughs> access Google here is because the benefit of a copyright regime on the other side of the Pacific. That's why we access Google. Not because Australia allows it. If Google tried to set up servers here, they would, they would have the pants suit off them. So if News Corp doesn't like Google, stop your journalists using them, frankly. Stop them right now. But this isn't about Google. This is about Australian firms. How is it that those opposite don't have the wit or wisdom to work out a way to help Australian firms? Google and News Corp can look after themselves. I'm here talking about Redbubble. I'm here talking about Envato. I'm here talking about 99designs. I'm here talking about Australian entrepreneurs providing artist incomes and jobs for this country. But this failure by the Turnbull government to deliver on this shows you they are all talk on innovation, but they are not there when needed. The start-up community was there for the Turnbull government. The Turnbull government has refused to be there on the big policy issues for start-up for start, for start Oz, for all those companies in start-up Oz. Their national science, innovation and science agenda is collapsing on itself like a deflated, a deflated balloon. We haven't ever heard any of these ministers take on the ACCC as they've started to shake down start-ups and the acquisition of start-ups by bigger businesses, which is just nuts that they haven't done so. They, they've hardly raised a peep about the ATO impacting on R&D uh, incentives for software development, while the ATO has been spooking the start-up sector. And now this, safe harbour. Four failures in terms of innovation by those opposite. You stuffed the NBN, you've stuffed up digital transformation, 
You've stuffed up your innovation agenda, and our firms are paying for it. Australian firms are paying for it. It's not good enough. This bill can be supported, but the government's got to be condemned for what's not in the bill. I thank the member for Chifley. The question is that this bill be now.